Everyone remembers something scary from their childhood. Why is that? Is it because everything seems so big and grown up? Is it because kids attract things that are supernatural? I don't know. Everyone has their own theory. I can't explain it, but I can give you guys 10 of the very scariest stories the internet can provide. Let's see if you can beat them, or let's see if you can even handle these. My name is Danny Burke, and this is the top 10 scary childhood stories. Coming in at number 10 now, we have the Millers. This one comes from Reddit user WGES Scott. He said that he grew up in a poor family in South Dakota. His town had just 530 people in it, so he would often spend his time in the local library reading. On one such day, he was reading a history book about his area. It talked about a family called the Millers. Even though he didn't like his grandma, he asked her about them. She refused to say. He asked his aunts and uncles, and eventually he found out that in the 1930s, a family called the Millers had abandoned their property and moved to California. He got curious and decided to look for this house. Even though his family said it was foolish, there was nothing there, it was just a wasteland now. He cycled out to the place, and to his amazement, he saw a pyramid-looking object sticking out of the ground. As he got closer, he realized it was actually a roof. The building was buried in the ground. He climbed into the attic and saw some holes going down to the rooms underneath. He glanced into one and for a second he thought he saw something or someone lying on the floor. He ran as quick as he could all the way back home. His friend didn't believe what he had found so he took him there. However, when they arrived, they found the exact spot. They could see the tracks from where he was before, but the house had gone, vanished. There was nothing there at all. His tracks looked like he had just walked around the area in a circle. His whole family laughed at him, but in the 30 years since then, he has sworn that what he saw was true. Next up at number 9 now, we have Tennis Camp. Reddit user Old Trafford 24 said that when he was 11, he went to a tennis camp. He travelled there with his mum and every day, something odd would happen. As they walked past a fire hydrant, a boy on a bike would cycle past and ring his bell. Then an old woman would yell at him about 20 feet down the road. The boy followed the same path and the woman was always in the same exact spot, yelling the same thing. It freaked him out like they were stuck on some sort of perfect loop. He joked with his mum that they were aliens. His mum explained what a coincidence was. He knew what a coincidence was, and this didn't feel like it. The next Friday, they followed the same route. This time, something was different though. The boy didn't ride by. The woman didn't scream at him. She was nowhere to be seen. But then, inside a store by the side of the road, he saw them. They were both standing there an inch from the glass, heads facing downwards slightly, staring directly at him. They didn't move a muscle, they didn't blink, he never saw them again, but said he will never forget how creepy it was. Moving on to number 8 now, we have The Melting Face. This one comes from Reddit user Spider Lane Wales, who says that when he was very young, he slept in his parents' bed one night. He woke up and remembered the clock read 4am. There was something standing by the window, looking out into the front yard. It looked like a man in a brown wool robe. He was about six foot four. He sat up in bed and the thing turned around and looked at him. He never forgot the face. Pale white skin, covered in wrinkles. The face drooped like it was melting down into a pointed chin. Later in life, he saw the famous scream mask and thought it reminded him of that. However, despite the face resembling a mask, it still looked alive. Its mouth was hanging open and its eyes were wide, almost like it was worried or scared. It stared at him while it moved from the window, past the bed and out of the open bedroom door. The second it exited the room, the lights turned on by themselves. Both his parents jumped up on either side of him, breathing heavily like they'd just woken up from a nightmare. They didn't remember anything before waking up but he still does. Next up at number 7 now, we have the Toilet Squid. This one comes from Reddit user Raise the Avank, who said that he grew up in California and his family would often visit Big Sur for camping, hiking and such. During a visit when he was 7, he went to the bathroom in a restaurant called The River Inn. There were three cubicles, including one handicapped one. He went into one of the regular ones as the other two were taken. He remembered looking underneath the doors to see if there was anybody in the other cubicles, but there was nobody, but they were still locked. Then he looked into his own toilet and saw a huge huge squid. The body was at least a foot long, with tentacles coiled around the inside of the toilet bowl. It filled all the available space, its cloudy squid eyes gazing up at him. He ran out of the bathroom, told nobody, and waited 45 minutes to use the toilet at home. He said 25 years later, the empty lock cubicles and the toilet squid still freak him out. Moving on to number 6 now, we have the bus trip. This one comes from a Reddit user called Bananas. She was on a 15 hour bus trip with her family through Mexico. It was late at night, after several hours, 
they stopped at a gas station. That's when she noticed there were a lot of police cars around. When they got back on the bus, their driver told them that the police had received a tip that their bus was being targeted for a robbery by Mexican bandits. The police would escort them. They drove for hours along a winding road on the side of a cliff. One police truck pulled in front, another went behind. All of the police officers were armed. Even as a kid, she was on high alert, but eventually fell asleep. She woke when the bus came to an abrupt stop. She remembered peering out of the front window and seeing some large rocks that had clearly been placed across the road. Everything was dark except for the rocks illuminated by the bus lights. She knew that if the police weren't there, the bus driver would have got out to remove the rocks and then the bandits would have attacked, robbed, and possibly even killed all of them. The scariest thing was that even though the police were there, the bandits must have been nearby, lurking in the trees waiting. Next up on number 5 now we have the Arctic Lights. This one comes from Reddit user Meaningless Debate Man. He said that he grew up in the Arctic Circle. One night he borrowed his parents snowmobile to head out of their small town. He wanted to go and lie in the snow away from the light pollution and just watch the northern lights and whatever else passed over that clear night sky. As he was lying there he heard a clicking noise and presumed that it was just his snowmobile cooling down. When he realised it wasn't that he thought it might be an animal nearby but it was too mechanical for that. Then he noticed the sound was actually coming from above. He scanned the sky but found nothing. Just before giving up, he noticed something strange in the northern lights. There were three strong points of light getting steadily brighter. The clicking noises got louder too. Then it all stopped, like nothing had happened at all. He heads back home on his snowmobile, wondering if he was going crazy. His house was quiet when usually his family would still be awake. It wasn't until he got into bed and looked at the time that something hit him. It was almost 6 a.m. He had gone to lie in the snow at 11 p.m. He thought he had seen Seen those clicking lights for just a few moments, but in reality, he'd been staring at them for almost seven hours somehow. What were they? How did they do that to him? Your guess is as good as mine. Next up at number four now, we have the abandoned hospital. This one comes from Reddit user Uzero. As a kid, he and some friends decided to check out an abandoned mental hospital. The only way in was through the autopsy room. When they got inside, one of the girls started crying and said she wanted to go back. They tried to convince her otherwise, but to no avail. As they walked out, he took one last glance back at the building. It was dark, but there was a little moonlight. There, on the second floor, was a girl in a white dress standing at the window watching them leave. He stared at her and made his friend watch too. He thought it might be a trick of the light but after 20 seconds or so the girl moved. They ran as fast as they could away. When they got home they tried to just brush it off and explain it away but they couldn't and even today they still can't explain the girl in the window. Moving on to number three now, we have the nursery. This one comes from DJ Liz. For this one, his mum was actually pregnant with him, but it's too good to miss out. His parents had just bought their house, and within a few days, the neighbours came over to introduce themselves. They also told his parents that the previous owners had moved out after a nasty divorce. You see, their second baby had died suddenly, and their relationship fell apart from there. His parents were horrified and couldn't imagine going through the same thing. They eventually almost forgot about it, and life went on. In preparation for the baby, they decided to put new wallpaper in the nursery room. His dad told his mum there was no need to wallpaper the inside of the closet, but she insisted. She was kneeling down, scraping off old paint inside of the closet when her eyes fell upon something and she froze in terror. There, written in crayon, at about the eye level of a toddler, a childish scribble said, I killed the baby. Now they knew what happened to those parents' second baby, and it looks like the first was to blame. Next up at number two now, we have the long skirt. One Reddit user said that his dad used to help look after an old house, and would go and check on it every six weeks or so. He would go along with his dad on Sunday mornings because he loved the building and the history it had. So many people had lived and died within its walls. On one such morning, his dad was working away, and he was playing upstairs in the room that used to be for a child. He always liked playing in that room. He had been playing for about five minutes before he got the strange feeling that someone was watching him. He turned around to see what looked like a long skirt follow someone down the hallway. He snuck out to see who was there and caught a quick glimpse of the back of a woman walking into another room. He entered the room literally two seconds after and the place was empty. There was only one door into that room as well. He told his dad and they searched the house. It was empty. But he knew what he saw and he knew it must have something to do with the history of the old building. And finally number one now, we have the blue dress. This one comes from Mr. Hegel. He said that when he was younger, he used to think he was having dreams of an old woman in a blue dress and cat eye sunglasses sitting at the end of his bed singing to him. She'd always sing the same song and then just leave. One night he followed her into his brother's 
room. Instead of singing to him, he woke up and the two began talking. After 20 minutes, their mother came in and asked what they were doing. His brother said he was just talking to the lady in the blue dress. The mother sent them to bed. The next day, she told him to stop sneaking out of bed in the middle of the night to play with his brother. He asked her what she was talking about and she gave him her version of what happened, which was the same except no lady in the blue dress with cat eye glasses. The woman stopped visiting him after that and he began to wonder if it had ever happened at all. A while later, his aunt came to visit and refused to enter the house from the outside. They asked her why and she said there was an old woman standing in the upstairs window wearing cat glasses and a bright blue dress. What did you think of those then? Did any of them bring back some childhood memories that you'd forgotten? I read one that kind of did and I think that's pretty creepy. Have you got any creepier stories though for a part two? Let's hear them in the comments section. Thanks for watching. As always guys, my name is Danny Burke and I will see you all in the next video. This is how I